Hey everybody, this is Scott with Ledger Dredger. I'm coming back to you with another use case for Airtable. So, if you're looking to start a podcast, manage a podcast, um, you know, if you've already got an existing podcast and looking for some way to um, clean it up, clean up all the data and everything else, I have a solution for you. It took me all day to create it, but it's pretty cool and I really like it. As you can see, by the title of the base, it's a podcast RSS feed creator. What does that mean? That means you don't have to know anything about creating an RSS feed, and you can create one using this tool. Um, so, I've entered in some dummy data. This stuff is not real. Um, but this would be a sample of if I wanted to create my own podcast for my business who knows maybe one day I will um, but it's super simple and once you get the process down of what fields you know to fill in on a regular basis which it makes it as easy as possible um, man you're good so um, this is broken down into three tables and only two tables you have to fill in. The third, um, you just look at and verify that everything is showing up correctly. Um, and then it spits out your, your RSS feed. And guess what? It even updates as you update the base. So um, it's pretty sweet. <laughs> um, uh, as you can see, this is our the shows table is our channel data now this you only have to fill in one time unless something changes which it really shouldn't maybe the category or something like that if you change your show around but um, ideally you fill this in one time one time one time and that's it so um, let's look at the data here here is the link to the feed table so that's going to be the show name, and it also populates here. Um, yeah, let, let me just walk. Let's go and make another one, right? Um, okay, so boom. I want to create a new show. We'll call it Deep Dives. Boom. You see, populates here, populates the show title, and you're good to go, right? So the link. Also, this has, um, I, I've included the descriptions and everything from iTunes. And so um, this is perfect if you're wanting to create an Apple podcast. It, it follows all of that. I don't know. I haven't looked into um, like Stitcher and things like that at this point. I think, I don't think I used any iTunes specific. Actually, yeah, I think there is some iTunes specific coding. Um but it can be easily modified and I'm gonna come up with a tool once I figure out the differences between the different platforms come up with a tool for those later on but what I did was um, put all the descriptors and everything in on these little information bubbles to tell you you know and give you examples of things that they're looking for um, for each individual field right and then um, these asterisk fields are required so if you, we go up here to our views and instead of the edit, these are all the editable fields possible for this particular table. But if we go to just the required fields, it's going to filter out all the other ones. And this is, at a minimum, the required information to be filled in in order to make the RSS feed work um, and pass validation. Okay, so as long as you, if you fill in everything, then you don't have to worry about it. Um, and it just, you know, makes everything look a little nicer when everything's all filled in. <laughs> um, if you're OCD or something like that, like I am. Um, but see, this is the link associated with a podcast. So this will typically be like your homepage. And boom. Okay, the show language. Now, this is automatically set up, If, as you can see here, as English, the US English to be your default language. If you need any other languages, it's in here 
um, you have to click on this one in order to go down to the link and then open the link there but it'll give you a list of available languages um, you have to use the ISO 639-2 language codes um, in that table that pops up on the site so um, if you speak English and you know all that you're good to go you just create a record and this create is created automatically uh, the copyright you don't have to put the copyright symbol you just put the text after the copyright the code generates all that automatically for you so um, let's say that and then uh, the author and then the show description so we're show called deep dives and other description will be Airtable deep dives now Siri the tie the show type um, if your show is serial, you have to use this tag, but if it's episodic, which is the default, you don't have to. Um, the difference is all in this. It's if you have content that has to be um, consumed in sequential order. So um, we'll say yes. And then this is the owner contact information. So um, in your feed, there's an owner tag. And so... Um, We'll say this and then the email also falls within that the image is our podcast image um, in the the picture that shows up you know in iTunes or in whatever else um, we'll call we'll say this one's education now the category and subcategory um, is where things get a little bit interesting it's why this table is actually so long so um, since Airtable is not does not contain any conditional logic, um, I can't make these fields appear, disappear, or filter um, these things. I could filter them if I used a link. I don't want to do that. So um, I just have a bunch of single select menus. Now, um, it at a minimum the category has to be filled in, and this gives you you know the example and the description there. All of these subcategories don't necessarily have to be filled in if you don't want to, but if your category is one of these subcategory, uh, is one of these subcategory names, for instance, this is education, so I go to the education subcategory, and then I can select one. So this would be how to, okay? And so what this will do is depending on what information is filled in at a minimum like I said the category has to be filled in but depending on what information is filled in is going to change the code that your feed spits out so um, I'm always a fan of the more information the better so we'll fill those two in and then we get down here to the end um, explicit and so this will mark your podcast as explicit or not true or false um, and so we say false here. The new feed are URL at the block and the complete. Now these three will be uh, in for, of infrequent use. Okay, this one is if you uh, have to change your new URL for your feed. Um, this one is to hide your show from the uh, iTunes. Uh, being able to the search from in iTunes removes it from the directory, and then this one the complete is if um, your show will never be published to again. If you're you know say you did you have something like you create a show around a story or something like that or a book, and you know you go through the whole book, well boom you check complete, and that'll enable or that'll tell Apple this podcast will never be published to again so it all changes the code um, that it, this whole thing spits out so these last three will be you know very infrequent use if ever um, and that's it for that sets up our, our channel code um, which is the first um, section in our feed code so um, we go to the next table the episodes now this is where all of your episodes for all of your shows will be housed right um, 
currently we have just these two episodes for this one show. So let's go in and create another one. So our show deep dives. Okay. Um, the show name will be populated once we fill in some of these other fields. Uh, this, okay. So the additional episode field. Now what we do ideally is group this by the feed link. And now once we create a record, a new record in either one of these groups, it'll automatically have the show name and we don't have to worry about, you know, losing information, losing data, losing records or, you know, whatever else having to go in and manually put it in and whatnot. It just works now. Um, you know, so it just makes, it's one less thing you have to fill in and one less thing you have to worry about. Um, if you're managing multiple shows, say you're like a, a, man, a podcast management company or podcast booking company or something like that, that does uh, different podcast shows and stuff like that, it makes it a, you know, a little bit easier to manage the data because you don't have to worry about linking all these things properly, right? But the additional episode um, checkbox is for every episode following your first episode. So your first episode never receives this check mark. All of the other episodes do in this use case. Okay. Um, so, and it does make a difference. It, it will, if you don't select the additional episode, it will not affect the code. It will not make the code ineffective. What it will do is make the code harder to read. Okay. So if you don't check these boxes, it's not like you, the code that you get won't work at the end. It will still work. It just doesn't look as nice and won't be as readable. For somebody like me, that's kind of an important thing. So um, I always, you know, I, I want things to be readable, you know, because I actually know how to read, you know, HTML coding and things like that. So if I ever wanted to edit something on my own or just even go to my feed code and look at it and see and try to find whatever I need to find or whatever the case is, you know, I can just go do that. But if it's not in a readable format, if it's just a big text block, that's hard to do. So this makes it a little bit easier to read and look a little bit more organized. Um, so that's why that exists. But the first, the first episode will never get that. Um, the, t the episode type, um, I think, let's see, there's trailer, bonus, and full. Um, full is the default. Um, so, you know, you don't have to fill that in, but um, I'm, again, OCD. Uh, the title. So what's the title of this episode? Um, what we're doing, podcast management, right? And then the description for the episode. Now you can notice that the title, there's only two um, main things, or well, in this case, it's four fields, but these are really two items that are required is the title, the URL, the length, and the file type um, are the only things required in the ep for each episode. Everything else is just additional data, but it all helps, you know, like I say, the more um, information you give it, the better off it'll look. You know, if you don't add an episode description, it won't look as nice when you pull it up in iTunes or, or whatever platform you're using. So, um, we talk about podcast management. Okay. Um, the URL points to whatever episode or whatever your, um, uh, whatever file your actual audio file is for your podcast episode. The length is, I don't know why they don't call this file size because that's what it actually is. It's the file size of your, of that particular audio file in bytes. You get that by looking at the, you know, file information. You go to get info if you're, if you have a Mac, um, so it's the file size and bytes. This is the file type, and you can see it's a drop down. So there's the PDFs, the audio and video files. Um, these are the ones that it looks for and will accept. 
The GUID is a you know a globally unique identifier, and it's important. I don't really know much about it, um, but it you need one. If you don't have one, it gives you a link, I think, instead, and you can never change it. So it's always good to have one. We'll just make something up. Okay, then the publish date. Um, whenever this decides to get published, we'll just make it easy and go, say today. Um, that gets formatted with some other fields that are working in the background. The duration of the episode in seconds. Um, so we'll go there. Uh, whether or not the episode, these, this is the episode level, whether or not it is explicit. Um, the image is the episode artwork. Um, whatever all these uh, image files have to be publicly hosted um, somewhere and so you you send the link to it and a, the feed pulls it in um, this is the episode number so for this particular one it'll be episode one season one um, and then this block check box is if you want this episode to be hidden and not show up in iTunes okay and that's it that's all that's all folks and so now once we go to our feed table boom everything's already created and really all these fields you don't even have to look you know even worry about um, but this will give you a listing of all your episodes and whatever else um, but if we go to our feed view boom and this is created once all that information is filled in this is what it creates it creates your RSS feed and then you can take this copy and paste it into uh, your your RSS directory on your website and then take that URL and tell iTunes or whatever to this is my RSS feed URL boom there you go but this will update um, each time you add a new episode. So this one is just, um, this one's the deep dives. So um, there's not as much here. This one has two episodes. So there's going to be more data here. Um, boom. So there's episode one. There's episode two. And so this, as you create more episodes and add more data to this um, or actually that's episode one that's episode two um, as you create more data to it you know in here it'll at continually add your episodes to this feed and then you can just copy and paste and copy and paste and copy and paste or um, if you just wanted a blank shell you could just create this, call it blank, and then create one here, but we don't want it. We call it blank. Okay. And then it'll come here, and then we can see just a blank shell of our RSS feed and then we can copy and paste this obviously we need to enter in some data between these uh, quotation marks and stuff um, or delete these lines altogether actually these are should be all the required fields so um, you know you add the information between the quotes and then copy and paste the white space between won't affect anything um, you know the, all these lines when you put it in a in a feed or in a you know on your uh, host it'll ignore the white space so the white space won't matter or you can just manually delete it but I mean you just whoops well I guess it won't let me select all but you literally just come here control C and or come here control C and you can paste it anywhere you want so this is pretty cool um, 
because I myself don't know right off hand. Um, like I said, I know HTML coding, but I haven't done it in years. Um, and going through all this and getting the formulas to spit out the correct information was fun. <laughs> like I said, it took me a good portion of my day today. It took me almost all day. Um, but this is a pretty cool tool. And like I say, if you're not tech savvy and you're looking for an easy way to write an RSS feed or whatever else, um, you know, you can you can do it. You don't have to uh, um, worry about, you know, is the code right or whatever. This, all you have to do is type in the information in the right blocks and this thing will spit it all out for you. And here you can actually too, let's say you just wanted to copy part of your feed or whatever. Ooh, uh oh. Internet's not apparent. What? Apparently my internet's acting up, but you know, uh, you could copy part of it. Um, instead of the whole feed code, there's these hidden fields here of um, the channel code and the episode code. And this episode code is just this episode table. This channel code is just the shows table. Now you would also need to do the channel closing tags um, and these are the three elements of, that make up this whole feed code. But if you, let's say I just wanted to look at my episode code. I just come in here and these are my, my two episodes that I've got in here. And I can copy and paste these if I just want, if I want to paste those somewhere. Uh, if I just need my channel information, I come in here, boom, there it is. Um, you know, and then this is all of it together. So, uh, you can even segment the stuff out if you wanted you know and if you didn't want to have to copy the whole thing so uh, anyway if you have any questions if you would like to implement this if you would um, are looking to manage a podcast or looking to start one I mean this thing makes your life so much easier you don't have to hire somebody to do it for you you can take all that out of the equation and do it all yourself in a couple of minutes other than recording your actual content this will manage everything else for you um, like I said once you get you know the first table good everything filled in you don't have to do it again you do it once for each show the, then you just have to fill in one table for the rest of this and then copy and paste and that's it so uh, it makes it super easy super simple and uh, you can get out there and get your word out, get your message out. So if you if you'd like to implement this into your business, if you would like to uh, talk to me about it, schedule a call with us. Uh, you can go to www.ledgerdredger.com uh, is our website. You can find us on Facebook. You can DM us on Instagram. We're all over the place. Uh, there's scheduling links um, on our web page. There's a scheduling link on our Facebook page. Um, get a hold of us. We'd love to sit and talk with you about how Airtable can help supercharge your productivity so that you can go out, serve greater, and make a positive impact in the world around you. And, uh, you know, I hope that uh, you could find this useful, and I hope that you're having a great day. I will talk to you soon with another use case probably here in the near future. So, in the meantime, Enjoy Airtable, enjoy your family, and I will talk to you soon.